do you mean I haven't spoke about the Sega Mega CD or rather the Sega CD since 2019? All right, I guess it's time for a buyer's guide. <sighs> oh, get your words out. I guess it's time for a buyer's guide slash full collection, including my consoles. Let's roll the tint draw. Okay, Sega fans, where are you? In fact, if you're a Nintendo fan or just a retro gaming fan in general, I'm pretty confident there's some value to be had here for your good self. Stay tuned. I'm going to go through the games, but first the consoles. Now there's these first thing. First thing to note, collecting for the Sega Mega CD is not cheap. It is very expensive. However, there's a couple of cheap games that you might want to start off with in your collection. As far as consoles goes, I have three kind of iterations of the Sega Mega CD. I have the Mark I, uh, which is fastened tightly away in the cupboard there. I know. What the hell? I know, roast me, it's away. And that's because the Lady Lounge isn't finished yet, but that's compatible with the Sega Mega Drive Mark I. That box can go for anything from 250 to about 300 pounds so it's probably not going to be the best variant of the sega mega cd and i'm talking primarily in pal regions here let me know if you're in the us maybe things are the same maybe things are different but if you want to get an unboxed one you can get a good bundle at least i've seen good bundles on facebook marketplace for under 200 pounds with very basic games so you need to decide whether you want boxed or unboxed because that box is going to add about £100 on all of the models. The second one I have is literally down there, you'll see it on B-roll, it is the Mark II. This one is unboxed, but again, it goes for similar kinds of prices, box and unbox. Um, and then finally, the Gemstone, one of the more rarer iterations of the Mega CD is the Sega Multi Mega, which is a combi console with the Sega Mega Drive cartridges going at the back. And then obviously your CDs played in the front, a top loading system. That is my go-to console purely for size when I'm playing um, my Sega Mega CD games. It's gonna be out right here under the TV. I'm also gonna have a TV in the lady loft, so I might interchange consoles from time to time. Um, but I, and I will be getting a CRT before anybody roast me for that. Um, this again is a great console if you're short on space because it's the smallest but it is the most expensive console out there out of the three that I've mentioned. So do be mindful that you're probably gonna need about 300 plus uh, to get it unboxed with one controller. That's, so that's no games. But if you're lucky, you can get a really nice bargain. They seem to be going up in prices, the consoles do, so you need to be mindful of that. Unfortunately, there's no cheap way to play Mega CD games, but it is a fantastic console with some fantastic games as you're about to see, because I'm going to be deep diving into some of them, and then we're just going to be briefly scanning through the rest. So they're my three consoles. What are your three consoles, and when did you first play the Sega Mega CD? Now, I mentioned a few moments ago that there were some cheap titles for the Sega CD or Mega CD, and for me, that ranges in the £10 range, but with some of the bundles, you can actually get free games like the Sega Classics Collection, which include... Uh, Golden Axe, Super Monaco GP, Streets of Rage, The Revenge of Sn Snowby, Shinobi, and Columns, which was Sega's answer to Tetris, and it wasn't too bad. Again, some really nice variations here. You've got puzzle games, you've got side-scrolling beat-em-ups, you've got races. I think this is an absolute steal for 10 quid. I've seen it go as low as £10 anyway, but depending on uh, price and who you buy from, sorry, condition, and who you buy from, it might range between the 15 to 20 pound mark as well. So just be careful, do your shopping. I cannot stress this enough when you're at retro game markets, make sure you go to every single store before you make your final decision on your purchase because it's a game like this will vary in price range quite significantly. Another one of those double packs now then, we have Soul Feast along with Cobra Command. Now, for me, the gem in this double pack is definitely Soul Feast with some really nice cutscene, anime style, um, really cool dialogue, a little bit sketchy on voice acting, but if you're in to see like the likes of Super R-Type, so your kind of side-scrolling schmups, this is a lovely choice. 
And whilst it doesn't necessarily push the Sega Mega CD to its capacity in terms of graphics, because as we know there's some gorgeous FMV games, this for me feels more like a top-end Super Nintendo game or a Sega Mega Drive game we're talking about Sega. Um, but it's really really cool and it's really really awesome so definitely check it out. And again I haven't played much of Cobra Commands but for me this nice double pack here are for all the people out there that are into you shoot -em up games or flying games or any kind of air in the air games that is actually an academic um gaming term but if you're into your flyers guys i think this is nice and in terms of price again i've seen this range at the gaming markets from 10 up to 30 so the even bigger bracket compared to the sega classics collection so bear that in mind it's a pretty cool game and it's very common timing is absolutely everything in road avenger this was the first mega cd game i ever played and again i'm showing it in this initial four games because these are probably the cheapest and easiest to obtain games in my collection so this is a really cool game where you are driving a car but you're not actually driving it you're actually timed on the decisions you make so a direction will crop up and you have to mimic that on your d-pad in order to avoid obstacles avoid people and just plow through the level it's fun it's fast it's furious and it's difficult i struggled with it back when i was i think i was about 15 16 when i first played this i'm still now i'm 38 years of age yes i know i look like complete crap um but i still struggle with it now but i think if you are going to buy a sega mega cd collection this has to be in it it has to be one of your staple packet like games for the package that you get so it's relatively cheap but be mindful it's difficult if you want something to relax to this might not be the game but if you're one of those that wants to edge your seat stuff and you like your i guess kind of if you're into rhythm games or you feel that your, your reflexes are pretty sharp road avenger definitely for you and finally in the cheap game selection out of my collection we have some jaguar xj 2020 again 20 to 30 uh, sorry 20 10 to 20 pounds i actually paid 15 pound for this at a gaming market but i've seen it swoop as low as 10. this is a really nice racer that you know if you've played the likes of outrun the lotus turbo challenge trilogy over on the gorgeous amiga game um, amiga home consoles home computers rather my words out today and um, this is a game you will be familiar with it doesn't handle that well by today's standards but we're talking cheap this is a buying guide and i'm logging this right in the cheap game collection so if you can get those four titles or maybe a couple of the four that i've initially shown here you're off to a good start with your sega cd collection let's take a look now at some other games in the collection um, i'll put information over on text overlay and then we're going to finish off with a section of more expensive and sought after games so i guess the polar opposite of what you've just seen. Roll it.
if you're ready to splash some cash with your Sega Mega CD collection, the next six games are definitely up there. They're quality games and they cost an absolute wad of cash. The first is a Hideo Kojima classic. It is Snatcher. Metal, introduce yourself. Yes, sir. Pleased to meet you, Gillian. I am Metal Gear Mach 2. I am programmed to be your personal assistant. Metal Gear? That's a pretty weird name. Oh, he's cute. Uh, thank you. So, if you've not played Cyberpunk now, don't bother. I would recommend you actually play Snatcher as it runs a lot better and it takes place in that cyberpunk s universe. It's 2047, you play the role of a detective and there's lots of robots and mechs around that are pretty darn brutal if you come across them and are unable to defend yourself. I love the city, I love the cars, I love the dialogue, I love the characters in this game. It's absolutely wonderful and you can expect to pay well over £200, which in US dollars, I'll put it on the screen right now, um, it's quite pricey. So what I want to know is if you're in the continental Europe, how much would this be in euros for you? But here in the UK it does go for a pretty penny, but it's a masterpiece. And again, if you've got lots of cash or you want to just trade something in and get a really expensive game or avoid the cheap ones and focus purely on something like this, Snatcher is definitely a game that you must own for your Mega CD. Now I ask myself, what would a Sega console be without its most iconic mascot? Or oh, its iconic, most iconic icon? No, most iconic mascot, Sonic. We got some Sonic CD. Sonic CD takes everything that was really good about Sonic 1, 2 and 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles on the Sega Mega Drive. It's Sonic in the Sonic universe and you collect lots of rings and try your best to beat Dr. Robotnik or whatever his name is these days, but I grew up knowing him best as Dr. Robotnik, so a slice of nostalgia there for me. This game, it's not too bad, it has dropped in price a little bit and you can get it between 50 and 60 pounds depending on who you go to, whether it's your retro gaming market. I think at the minute my advice would be, if you're getting this, look for it for around 50 quid. If you want it complete, immaculate, whatever your collecting palette might want, expect to pay that a little bit more. Um, but yeah, it's a really fun game and I really, really enjoy this. And it was actually my friend Reese, a long time subscriber, good friend of mine that sent me this. So Reese, if you're watching, I want you to just know that I'm super grateful. Cheers, dude. Definitely a more obscure title now for the Mega CD, but it is up there in price. And this is Wonder Dog floating at the moment. Well, at least when I last checked around the 90 pound mark. So maybe just at over hundred dollars and it boasts a one player game where you play an awesome little canine trying to take on baddies in your side scrolling 2D platformer. I really can't speak today, but <laughs> nonetheless, uh, Wonder Dog is, is super cute, super cool, and I got this as part of a bundle many years ago, so fortunately, I got it for a little bit cheaper um, had I have bought it on its own. You don't see it around that often, like I said, so if you do, um, and it's your kind of thing, I mean, the gameplay isn't really that fast, but it is quite charming, and for me, this would have been an absolutely phenomenal game on a home computer, say, like on the Amiga, um, I don't really think it offers a great deal in technical advancements for the Mega CD, say compared to something like Night Trap does, but it's fun, it's obscure, and I needed to talk about it here in 2021 as part of this Bias Guide. Re-released a couple of years ago by the amazing Limited Run, Night Trap. I was going to say Snatcher, but I'm saying Night Trap because Snatcher hasn't had a re-release, but Night Trap has. This really did push the hardware, the FMV, so um, full motion video where real actors were used, um, cutscenes, the whole game um, was pretty much acted and voiced by the actors themselves. It was phenomenal at the time. It doesn't actually play that well on the Mega CD though. I actually prefer the fluidity and the ease that I got from playing right through it on the PlayStation 4. You, it's a very weird game. You know, think of like back to movies when, say like Scream or something like that, you know, a bunch of teenagers getting up to mischief when the sun's gone down and um, there's a killer on the loose, or in this case, there's some weird things that overtake the house and there's lots of traps in the house and you've got to avoid them. Some of the kids aren't so great in terms of their personality. In fact, the, the script is absolutely awful, if I'm honest, and there's this really cheesy song that I sang to on stream. 
But Night Trap, it is a, one of those games that is certainly one of a kind, and I wouldn't necessarily say you really need it on the Mega CD. Um, Price-wise, you're probably looking at £100 plus, depending. But if you don't want to pay that, be mindful, you might be able to get a cheaper copy and play it with much better controls and a much better UI on your PlayStation 4s. I'm actually cheating a bit here because this is one of my personal guilty... Well, it's not even a guilty pleasure. It's a bloody good game. It's Final Fight. Now, back in the day, this was the Super Nintendo's answer to Streets of Rage. So now seeing it and advertising, I guess, on a Sega console seems a little bit weird to me. But it's awesome. It doesn't even offer much more than what the Super Nintendo Final Fight did. In fact, you might be able to get it cheaper on the Super Nintendo because this, again, can go for about 40 quid upwards, depending. Final Fight had a quite a few releases. There is a Game Boy Advance release as well. But I think this is a more staple title and it kind of isn't an expensive title. I shouldn't have really shown it in this section. It's more of a mid-range title, um, but it's cool. But if you've played it on the SNES, just be mindful it doesn't offer that much more on the Sega Mega CD. So we've got the three iterations of consoles that you've seen today, all varying in price and size, weirdly. Definitely cheaper to get your unboxed stuff. We've got some cheap games ranging from 10 to £30, which I showed you in the first section. We've got the kind of B-roll games that I've shown you with the likes of, say, Prince of Persia, really other cool games like that. And then the more expensive games. So the Sega Saturn is one of those mysterious, it still holds a lot of mystery to me because I don't fully understand why we never gave it so much love. Um, say compared to even the breadth of something like the Super Nintendo library or even the Sega Mega Drive library, these consoles had much more love and a much bigger library and are arguably um, a lot more um, approachable for collectors to be able to get into. This feels a little bit more specialised, so I wanted to put it out there in 2021. And if you've enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing or becoming uh, just a general viewer, whatever you want to be. Thanks for the support. Um, streams are on Twitch. Links are in the description, so go and check it out. But for now, have a lovely day. My name is Gemma. Take care. See you soon.